Today's thrift store challenge will be a little bit different as we will be transforming my very builder grade basic bathroom. So we're gonna look at some high end inspiration and then we're gonna go to the thrift store to see what we can come up with for a whole lot less. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. As I was gathering inspiration pictures for this bathroom, a consistent theme was kind of this stone wall. So I went to the hardware store to see what options were kind of available in that department and everything just seemed very peel and stick and didn't have any added dimension. So then I headed over to Amazon and I found these and I remember seeing Dahlia use these for her backsplash and I thought these would be perfect. It'll be the most realistic way to go for the idea that I have in mind. To attach these to the wall I used command strips but then I also used my nail gun in specific places just to make sure that it would stay nice and intact the trickiest part for me was just making sure everything was going to line up extremely well so what I ended up doing was just making a template so that way I could just apply it to the wall and then apply that to whatever sheet needed to go next for each sheet I used two command strips cut in half so I would have one in each corner once the entire wall was filled in, now it was time to do our faux grout. So for this, I'm going to use joint compound and I put it in a piping bag and grouted all along the seams and inside between each stone. I then spread it around with my fingers and then wiped off the excess back into the joint compound and then cleaned off each stone with a damp rag. And this is how the wall turned out. We're gonna discuss all of the other components, but I think that this really sets the tone for the direction I wanted to head for this bathroom makeover. Next, I wanna talk about the bathroom vanity. So all of the inspirations that I love have this kind of reeded or fluted quality. And the current vanity that was in there was just very outdated, very builder grade, and I thought we could definitely give it a little makeover. The first thing I really wanted to deal with was the sink. So initially I was going to um, just caulk the seam here, but what I've realized is a lot of the inspirations that I have don't actually have this piece and it just makes it look, I think, a little bit more dated. So now we're gonna go ahead and tape this off, tape this off, and then the wall around here. We'll add drop cloths and do all the things. After doing a bit of research, I landed on just spray painting it. And I was very skeptical of this idea, but I thought I really don't have much to lose. I'll be out nine bucks if it doesn't work, if it starts peeling. So I thought it was worth a try. I know it says interior use, but just make sure you're turning on your fans, wearing a mask, opening windows, doing all that you can to be safe. I gave three coats of the white appliance epoxy waiting about 15 minutes in between each coat and I let that fully dry. And then for the handle and the drain, I then now needed to tape off the sink and first went in with a self etching primer. It bonds to metal. It's supposed to prevent scratching and things like that. And then once that dried, I went in with a high performance enamel in matte black. I did that combination to a lot of the finishes in this bathroom and so far everything has held up great. So now with the countertop, it's just finishing up drying. I want to start working on the cabinets. So let me show you what I found at the thrift store. So I found this, I believe it was a blind for $2 at the Hartville thrift shop. And my initial plan was to put it in here like this going long ways. It's just a little bit too short. Option number two is then to put it this way and then that way I'm not worried about it because I have more than enough going this way. So I'm going to cut this down using a circular saw after taking some measurements of the inside panels of these cabinets. So to attach these two pieces together, I'm going to use something called liquid nails. To put this in, you first wanna just push down, slide this out, so then you could take this out, okay? If this is a brand new thing, you would use this here to kind of chomp it off. And then this thing here, poking this inside so it breaks the seal so that you can use it. Because I think sometimes no one teaches you this stuff, so you have to kind of teach it to yourself. Per the instructions, it says to make like a zigzag down whatever you're trying to attach. 
After attaching that kind of reeded quality to these very builder grade cabinets, it was then time for paint. So I just chose to use the same paint that we used in our kitchen. It is called Perfect Grage, and I usually go in with a brush first and then a roller to kind of finish it off. Grabbed some hardware from my stash, and this was the end result. Vanities can add anywhere from 200 all the way up to thousands of dollars to a bathroom makeover, and I was able to do this for under $35. Next up, I wanna talk about the decorative accents, especially in a small space. Those decisions can really impact how the overall design looks. One thing I knew I wanted in this bathroom was a rustic stool, and that's definitely a treasure hunt when you go to the thrift store or to the antique store. So I ended up finding this one here that was a milking stool, and I contemplated just using it for like a towel rack. This stool was just $20, and the gentleman who worked at this antique store was so sweet. He knew that I wanted that center Part removed. He ended up hammering it out for me. So then that way I could place like a beautiful plant or set my phone down, just another texture to add to this bathroom. Also at that same antique store, I picked up this almost black glazed pot as well as this ladle at the antique mall. And I wanted to combine these two pieces together to display bath salts. So of course I could just stick this Dr. Teal's on the back of my toilet and that's fine. But like I said, every selection matters when you have a small space. So finding those really intricate and unique and creative details really add to the overall design and make it feel a little bit more personal to you. As no, I love a wall sconce. So I knew I wanted to incorporate some form of a wall sconce in this bathroom and it would get bonus points for me if I could also use it to hang a towel. So I found this really beautiful calla lily wall sconce that was so unique and it was only $10. I liked that it had that swoop because then that way I can just place the hand towel in between that swoop, but then have that kind of beautiful ambient lighting in the bathroom. On top of the rustic stool, I wanted to place some sort of a plant that I didn't really have to worry about taking care of. So at the antique mall, I looked around for some sort of interesting glassware that was a different shape. I wanted it to be round and I ended up finding this one here for just $24 and just gave it a good clean, also ended up finding this foliage here for just $7. And one thing I like to do is to just add water to glassware. If you plan on putting even fake flowers in there, it just adds to a more realistic look in the end. I've never had any issues with it damaging my stems in any way. And I think it just creates a more realistic look overall. In addition to that, I wanted to place just a small little bud face on top of the glass shelf that we made. So I feel like this sort of a vase is a lot more common at a thrift store. I ended up finding this one for just 50 cents and decided to take a clipping from my peace lily and place it on top of the shelf. Another thing I wanted to buy for this bathroom was a really beautiful waste bin. And all of the ones at the antique mall, while beautiful, were just too big for the space. So I ended up finding this larger rectangular vase that was originally $45, but I just paid $2 for it. It slides in there perfectly. This is our guest bathroom, so I think having a small waste bin is a good solution. Next up is the mirror. So in the inspiration, I loved this arched mirror that was just a matte black. It felt more modern, which I like that juxtaposition with things that feel very vintage and antique. So the mirror that was in here was just your very typical clip builder grade mirror. So I just needed to first remove that. And if you've never removed a mirror that has clips in it, grab a box cutter and just push up on those clips. And sometimes they fall forward, but this one for some reason didn't wanna do that. So I had to kind of slide it out the other way and then just remove those anchors there that were holding that mirror in place. I went to the hardware store to see if I could find anything that felt a bit more vintage. And they did have this one that was 
quite discounted from the original cost. I also kept my eyes out at the thrift store, but I wasn't finding exactly what I wanted. And if you had watched last week's video where I redid my entryway, this arch mirror that I already had was the mirror that used to be in that room. So I decided this would be perfect for the bathroom. I don't have to spend any additional money. So make sure that you are shopping your house as well. The next thing I knew I needed to replace was the lighting above the mirror now. So I ended up finding this one here on Facebook Marketplace because a lot of my inspirations have this kind of cylinder lighting, but it can oftentimes be expensive and this was just $20. Step one is you wanna turn off all the electricity going to that room. So find your breaker box, figure out which switch you need and turn that off completely. Then we had to remove our old fixture. So we just took the electricity pieces out and unscrewed the light fixture that was currently there, cut those caps off because then that way we could use them for our new light. My son Roman was on flashlight duty. <laughs> Are you excited? I'm back laughing. from school guys. Now it's time to put up our new light. So it's helpful to have two people so one person can hold the fixture while the other person connects the matching wires together and then cap them off and then you want to screw that in after you make sure that the light is actually working. It's good. Turn it off. Last but not least, I wanna talk about textiles. So there's nothing really wrong with the shower. I wish it was a little bit brighter, but I actually much prefer to clean showers like this than showers that have tile, that you have to worry about things getting dirty all the time. It's much easier to maintain a shower like this one, but it's definitely not my favorite thing to look at. So I knew I was going to need some sort of a shower curtain. I ended up finding this fabric at the Hartville Thrift Shop and it was the right dimensions. I was going to have more than enough to make sure that I would be able to lift my curtain basically to the top and then have it just kind of kiss the floor. So I cut the bottom section off and washed the fabric really well. I used bleach, pine salt, and laundry detergent. And then to dry it, I usually dry it on like a steam sanitary setting in my dryer. I created a hem at the top as well as at the bottom and then just steamed it. For the inside of the shower, I just ordered on Amazon a liner that would at least meet where the tub sat so that way water wouldn't come outside of the shower. As for the hand towel, I ended up finding this really pretty waffle-like one. So I'm just gonna place that inside of our Calla Lily wall sconce. And then for cleaning, I found several white hand towels that were in really good condition. So I just folded a few, put them on that glass shelf to add to the overall kind of spa-like look I was trying to achieve. And that really wraps it up for today's video, guys. Let me know down in the comments what was your favorite find, what was your favorite project. I hope everybody has an amazing week. Bye, guys.